So, so, uh, so we have been hired by the town of Waitley to look at this area and um, sort of strategize ways to uh, energize this area and um, turn it into more of an economic driver for the town. And so we, this is our second stakeholder meeting. We've had one prior to this. Um, so we're still very early on. And our goals for this meeting are really just to hear from you all. Um, you know, we have some ideas ourselves, but we want to hear from everyone else before we start to flesh out our own ideas. Um, and so this is the area that we're looking at. So we are looking at from the Deerfield Waitley line to the north, all the way down to the Urfield Christmas tree farms um, to the south. And we're stretching all the way to the Waitley Diner on the west hand side and then Long Plain Road, which is just to the east of the railroad tracks coming through that area. Um, so you can head to the next page. Is everyone familiar with the area? I figured so much, but just, just um, And so the first thing that we are looking at in this area is the geographic constraints. Um, what is just a hard no for us. And so those areas are um, the wetlands. So if you look at these images, everything that has that dotted hatch pattern to the west there um, is wetland. And we have a number of them on our site. Uh, and then the construction of I-91 um, came through and created this massive landform. And a lot of that steep topography on either side of the interstate is really challenging to deal with and um, sort of takes construction off the table for a lot of those areas. And so the map to the right shows shaded out the areas that are undevelopable due to steep topography, wetlands. Um, yeah, and even so, where Waitley Diner is to the west, that parcel to the south too. In our last meeting, we had discussed that the wetlands are even more significant than we had captured in this. This is data collected from MassGIS, which is a public resource online, but um, the owners of that parcel had done a wetland survey, which is even more detailed, obviously. And um, and a lot of that parcel is, is covered in wetland at this point. I'm sorry, who decided that that I, I was just by there and it, it doesn't look like wetlands. It's like a mowed field. Yeah, uh, wetlands can take on a number of looks. It doesn't necessarily have to look wild and brushy to be a wetland. It's really just a function of, of the topography and what plants you find there. And obviously a wetland scientist would be much more detailed about this, but um, that I just bring it up to say that that parcel we had talked about in the last meeting, and we think that there are some more constraints with that parcel than what this map is showing right now. Uh, and who, who put the, yeah, the, who put the constraints on that? Yeah, we can see where it's wet down in the corner. The left yeah, so I think I was the one at the last meeting who reported that Scott Jackson had come to a planning board meeting where a proponent was trying to do a site plan review and he came very early in the process to try and convince him that that parcel was undevelopable and the Conservation Commission would not um, you mean Scott, Jack Scott Jackson Scott. would not approve it, Scott? Well, Scott is chair of the Conservation Commission and and has written a book on wetlands, literally. Yep. And um, so he said over the past 20 years, he has seen I don't know how many projects proposed there and um, none of them were doable. And so he had actually come to this meeting to try to save the applicant from a lot of legal expense before he pursued things too far. So I, yeah. I, I hope you talk to Scott because he, he can explain it. He I, said it's effectively a wetland. I think that was the phrase. He yes, 
That's that's what we received information on, but we haven't been in touch with anyone who has been able to provide us with a wetland survey for that parcel. So we can't update it to be exact at this moment, um, but we just know that it has been a, a contested parcel in terms of how much of it is actually covered by wetland. Um, and so after the geographic constraints, we obviously have to look at the political constraints as well. So, um, so on the left, we have a zoning map. Um, and just um, broad strokes, you can see that the yellow and the purple take up a lot of our focus area. And those are both residential agricultural district. And so if our goal here is to boost economic activity, um, it would make more sense for, or to energize this area, it makes more sense to focus our efforts on the commercially zoned parcels or the commercial industrial and zoned parcels. Um, and so one of the things that you'll notice is that the commercial industrial zone, which is in red, is on the other side of the train tracks um, and is a little bit disconnected from the rest of our focus area just because of that. Um, and so for us, we've been looking at the commercial, commercially zoned um, block up there as a potential area to focus in more on. Um, and if you look at our little, uh, at the breakdown in the corner here, you can see that the agricultural areas take up almost like 65% of the area um, in terms of square footage. But in terms of number of parcels and opportunities that you have within each parcel, there is a lot of opportunity in the commercial zone. We have 14 parcels there. Um, and, so, and so that is a great opportunity to, um, to propose something. On the right-hand side, though, is a map that highlights all of the existing non-conforming uses. So in that commercial core, where we have 14 parcels that we could potentially propose new development on, we have a bunch of residential uses in there because those uses were existing pre-zoning regulation and have been sort of grandfathered in. So, um, so just noting that even within the commercial areas that we do have on our site, we are relatively limited as to what we can propose there just because of the existing uses that are allowed. Um, and then to the other side, we also have a commercial zone, and this area is where Wheatley Diner is, and um, we are, well, I will work to that. <laughs> um, and so, if you can skip to the next slide. And so, one of the other really important political constraints that we wanted to highlight in this meeting that I don't think we touched on last meeting is the state for city controlled roads. That was a big question in the last meeting. And the difference is really stark. So on the left, those are all of the state controlled roads. And anytime you're dealing with mass DOT, there's gonna be extra permitting, there are extra regulations that you have to follow. Um, and so we're limited on the amount of curb cuts we can propose, we're limited on where we can propose a, propose a curb cut, how close to an intersection, um, things like that. You'd only have one curb cut per parcel. Um, and so it really limits the types of de development you can propose. And so right now the city only controls a portion of Old State Road. Um, and so thinking about you know, where do you want to see new development? Um, if we want to try to create a, a commercial core in that area up there, um, surrounded, surrounding Old State Road, um, it would probably be a really great idea for the city to, to take on the maintenance of maintaining those roads in exchange for having more freedom to allow the um, owners of those parcels to be a little more creative with, with what they propose. And then, oh, yeah. A, a question. Uh, the earlier slide showed that, well, getting back to the study area, uh, the area west of the diner is, is not in your study area. And I understand that is state owned land because of I 91 or whatever going through. Has anybody looked at what restrictions there are on, on that state owned land? 
and trying to negotiate with the state whether they will let the town or, or private development do something there. On the other side of the road of the diner? Are you right, saying? on the west side of the diner. It's all wetlands. We well, I understand drive. part of the north, the northern part is the geographics. It's, it's in a uh, low, low lying area. Yeah. But I think the southern part from the diner south. It oh. may be possible. I don't know. Has anybody looked at, at that as part of the study area? This was the study area that was given, that was provided by the town. So I don't know if Brian wanted to speak on where you drew the line and why. Um, yeah, Fred, Fred, which part are you talking about? Where it says, where the Route 5 sign is? West of the diner. Well, so the west, west side of State Road, west of the diner. That's all st state land, right? So that's yeah. all wetlands. Is that all wetlands yeah. as well? Yeah, see where that hatch pattern is, all the dots? Well, I can. Is it hard on that? I too? think, though, that some of that is mass fish and game land, and there are trails there, and it's open for recreation. Yeah, and I suspect it's also likely Article 97 protected. So, well, not impossible, but uh, uh, a no, high hurdle to... But it might be possible to create a parking area somewhere, even perhaps a small area within that land. Whitley has all this uh, state our state land that's protected and available for recreation, and none of it has any parking. And, and it's virtually inaccessible. So one possible way to attract people is to try and figure out how to create parking so that somebody could use that land. And can and, uh, I, do we know what other use, uses would be allowed, and, and what kind of uh, agreements? Or, well, I was thinking, I was thinking for hiking and and hunting and that bird watching, and because that's that is allowed under that under there. Does anyone know where the there's a rail trail? I know that's somewhere in the works. Is that going to come in? over on this side, or is that going to come in closer to the Deerfield River? No, nobody, no, no idea. There's a, a rail trail coming up from Northampton. There's a connector that's going to come up from Northampton and through Hatfield. I've seen the plans up through Hatfield and that goes into Deerfield, but because it's Franklin County, I haven't seen what their plans are. So, I mean, the rail trails bring, you know, lots of people and all of that. I'm wondering if there's some way we can connect to that rail trail and bring people here to uh, Waitley. But I, I'll, I'll check into that. I'll check into that because I know the rail trail guy uh, and I'll see how close we're coming. First thing, I, I think that rail trail is is going to parallel 116 to the to the east of this study area south of 116 and and somehow ties into Mount Sugarloaf with the trail they are continuing towards Sunderland that's the last Wait, what I, I, but I know they're, they're I know they're coming up from Northampton they're they're already as far as the center of Hatfield and they're right. and they're figuring out a route north from Hatfield to Deerfield to connect over that bridge so I mean it, it, it would make sense if we could somehow get, some, you know, a spur at least this way. Definitely. I think that is something that was brought up in the last meeting too, that we just- I, I know, I brought it up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that we're still we're still working on incorporating that, but um, I, I've written it down. So we'll definitely address it in the next meeting. We'll see what types of connections we can make. Um, let's- Move to the next one, yes. Um, and so on the left here, we have just a plain base map um, with all the parcel lines drawn in and our focus area and some labels you can see where you are. Um, and on the right hand side is just a zoning use table um, in case any of you had ideas already and you were curious what's possible. Um, these are just some ideas, these are taken just right from the zoning ordinance. So um, yeah, let me just briefly just read off some of the um, ideas that we talked about in our last meeting. Um, so we have a good jumping off point. So um, the visitor center was an idea that was very popular. Um, we talked about affordable housing for workers of the Sugarloaf shops. That was something um, that was mentioned 
there wasn't any nearby. Um, so that was a, was a suggestion. Um, bike path connections uh, and creating uh, overlay districts or zoning code amendments to allow for reduced parking in the commercial area and potentially to allow drive throughs. Um, and questions we still have from our last meeting are working out utility connections, what types of utility connections are available in that area. We're still waiting on some data um, from public works. Um, and also seeing if the Tritown Beach area was Article 97 land, which we are also not sure of at this point. So um, with that in mind, we'd love to hear um, if any of you have suggestions or questions or ideas or visions, anything that would help to sort of guide our design process um, would be great to hear. So I'll just open it up. I think one thing that needs to be looked at, and I don't know if you've done this yet or proposed, is, is the, the right of way limits or lines for 116 and, and even State Road. Uh, from a survey, you can look at the right of way on a map and stuff, but that's not accurate enough. Uh, because there seems to be excess right or excess uh, land or right of way, or whatever, in that Sugarloaf Shops area. And you, I guess you need to do some kind of survey or talk with Mass DOT uh, to see where the limits are for 116, because there may be possible more land there for development or expanded parking or whatever else this group decides to put in there. Not yeah. only 116, but also the, the town road. Uh, what's it? Uh, State Road Extension, I guess, that goes to the north of that. Yeah. What are the what are the right of way limits on them? Um, right now we have not gotten that zoomed in yet and that detailed. Um, we're just we have this space plan that we put together with MassGIS data, which is rough. It's mostly accurate, but you're right. It's not totally to the T. We would need to have it surveyed if we wanted to get um, an exact dimension. So we haven't gotten to that phase yet, but that's, I will write that down as an idea to just look in and see, you know, how much, how much space we really have in the right of way there. Well, I would think mass DOT, we should have maps and show, show you that and show you the distances. Well, how are you doing your own survey? Yeah. I would go to them first, but that's up to you how you do it. I take it you're assuming no change in any of the zoning, any of the uh, existing zoning. I think that if there's any sort of dramatic change to be made, there would have to be a change to the zoning um, based on, on, well, I, I don't know, I guess, what, what we're bringing in stakeholders is to see if we would like to propose a change in the zoning, um, to see if that's something that people are interested in. If, you know, if someone said, yeah, we'd love to see, um, I don't know, I can't think of anything, but um, we'd need to see what types of regulations and zoning changes would need to be made to support new development. So. So we're, we're starting with the ideas first and then seeing how well, to... Well, except that you constrain your ideas based on the zoning. So um, you, you, you... Well, the zoning can be changed, so... Yeah, well, that was my question because, you know, if we're really going to play with ideas, we may want to talk about overlay districts or... or... Yeah, we are, we are welcoming zoning changes as part of the idea process here. Yeah. Because that that would free up some things that, based on your presentation, wouldn't be available otherwise. Yes, correct. Judy, could you lay out maybe what some of those things are for me, who knows a little bit less about zoning than than you do? Well, I mean, if if one well, there are a couple things you can do. One is just literally to change the zoning, like where it's 
say the Christmas tree farm is ag residential and you wanted to make an extension of the com commercial district, mm -hmm. you could apply to do that. Mm -hmm. um, you it will require a town meeting vote, um, a two thirds vote at town meeting, but, but it's doable. Mm -hmm. okay. Another thing that might make more sense is to talk about a, and I'm just, I hadn't thought about this before, but I think it might make sense. A, a commercial development district or a mm, like an um, overlay district. An overlay district that would create a section that would have its own zoning rules. Mm -hmm. And I mean the overlay districts we have now are are for for water protection, but but you can certainly do it for other reasons. Mm -hmm. So you could just kind of create this whole overlay district around the intersection and write it in a way that would allow things that you th we would think appropriate. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. You had a question over here? Good evening. <clears throat> Pat McLaughlin with Memory Energy, uh, aka Wadley Diner and, and the Truck Stop. Um, we had, um, coincidentally, um, for I guess everyone's benefit except Brian, Brian uh, we had reached out through our civil engineer uh, a couple months back to, to speak with town staff about, um, you know, looking at some opportunities for redevelopment of, of our parcel. And that's when Brian had said, oh, well, look at the timing where, you know, we're, we would have invited you to an upcoming uh, stakeholders meeting. So, so we appreciate being here. Um, and we know we're only, you know, one parcel. Um, you had mentioned uh, the diner, and we'll get to that later. So, was there is there more you'd like to talk about specific to that? I just heard you mention that a little while ago. It it was mostly the fact of the parcel below that we were sort of missing information on that, and we knew that it had been rumored that it was worse than it looked on the map as far as like the wetland um, delineation goes. So, yeah, and that was that was part of some discussion that, that we had had more yeah. project specific to us. Um, I guess I, I would note in terms of, you know, zoning changes or, or an overlay district, those are, you know, all things that, um, you know, would make sense to us as, as we look at how we can best use our parcel specifically um, and keeping in mind what, what other folks are trying to do and, and what everyone here locally wants to, you know, the place to be. We, we, we'd like to expand and, and improve the existing offerings that that we currently have uh, with you know new uh new facilities um you know all, all the, the great amenities but um you know new and improved um uh, we, we had some discussion about how we uh incorporate the diner into that um uh, in our initial discussion with staff uh so we had to take a hard look at that but but we are because you know we we recognize the, the value of the of the diner, which is you know one of the reasons why we why we purchased uh, in that was in 2017. Um, so yeah, we we look forward to, to being a part of the process. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm the Donald's Bay Road, and I'm running a traffic every time there's any discussions about these uh, wonderful ideas of developing. As in how the traffic in that particular area? Yes. Um, we have not looked at that because we haven't really gotten any, um, like I said, we're not really proposing our ideas yet. Um, we're just in the phase where we're collecting everyone's ideas. Um, so. I would ask, is traffic a concern to you in that area? Okay. I think, I think there's been traffic studies in, in that area. If you remember the exit ramp on I-91 has been improved and also the, the uh, parking issue with the Sugarloaf shops and their access to 116 and, and State Road. There were studies done, traffic studies done by, I think, your, your design group for that one. And I'm sure the state did it for I-91 exit. So, so that information should be available if you're looking at current or future or what they're projecting, the capacity of the intersections is. Yeah, that's a great resource. Thank you. We'll, we'll look at this. Can I just ask, um, 
why uh, the property across from uh, down from the Waitley Diner across from Nate Zanoni? It used to be a, a restaurant um, that burnt down. Um, it's still in Waitley. I mean, is is that not of any interest in terms of commercial development, Brian? Um, it, it's, uh, I think all uses are on the table now. Um, but it was just sort of geographically separate. There was that large stretch of, you know, road from, wet, wet um, right. <laughs> yeah, the forest and wetlands. So that was why it wasn't included, but that's sort of on a separate track. Yeah. Do we know who owns that? I mean, it's just been empty for so long. Uh, the town owns it. It was taken in tax title. Maybe 2010, 2008, 2010. Does that sound about right? Fred? Fred? Yeah, yeah, something around there, yes. It's own commercial. Yep. Because I'd say that's, I mean, it's already zoned the right way. It's it's not that far. What is it, a half a mile? You know, from the diner. And the diner is such a pull. I mean, I, I know people from Boston who know where I live. Because of the diner. Yeah. There's, there's other Antoine. friends know where I live because of other things, but <laughs> Kristen and Parcel has been on been on the market for a, a number of years by before it came uh, ownership by the town. And mm -hmm. you know, it started at high values and, and got real low. Uh huh. that was uh, during the 2008 2009 economic, I guess downturn or whatever there was no interest i've talked to it was people. also fred zoned agriculture residential then right but it was for any kind of use and, and that could have been changed uh, well no not without changing the zoning and no, nobody's going to buy it when they aren't sure what the zoning will be right but it was the owner house. never the, the the owner before the town never applied to get the zoning changed I, I, I thought you said it was commercial. Is that not true, Jim? It is now. That it is. It wasn't. Oh, before. Okay. The planning board changed it subsequently, but at the time that it was on the market, it, it was not. It was not a commercial property, and I think that changes the value hugely. It most certainly does. All right, I just wanted to throw that out there because every time I drive by there, I go, "Wow, there's a." a great commercial piece and we don't even talk about that. Okay. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Brian, I think part of the, what we were tasked with is thinking about people that are driving, getting off I-91 and going towards Deerfield. And so that parcel is in the other direction. So in terms of so in terms of utilizing commercial lots that exist, that, that makes a lot of sense. And then in terms of capturing um, passerbys in that area, we might want to focus our efforts toward something over on that end as well. Yeah, I I think I think that's right. I think we were if that's a use that will attract users in in and of itself, I think that that that's great. But I think for the purposes of the study, I think that's why we were thinking, you know, the Whitley Diner is an attraction in itself. It's going to pull people a little bit south on Route Five, um, but maybe not too far. But if that's a if that's a use that's going to attract, you know, people to go that half mile, then then absolutely. Um, but I think for the purposes of the study, we're kind of trying to stay focused around Exit Thirty Five. Um, Needs to be a brewery. <laughs> Would sure seems popular in Deerfield. <laughs> and if, could. I was going to say in terms of timeline. So, um, when are, when would the next town meeting be? If you were looking at getting amendments proposed. Um, when do those have to be in by? Since right, you take timelines and layer them onto each other. You have to think about then earliest opportunities to actually then be applying for applications under those new uh, zoning requirements, and, and then therefore development after those approvals. The 
planning board's understanding is that that the town prefers zoning changes to go to annual town meeting, which is in the spring. To, lately, it's been in May. Um, special town meetings don't normally have enough attendance that people feel comfortable about a major zoning change. So you've talked about subsequent meetings similar to tonight's. Um, do you have a cadence of where, where I guess there's a, a study group versus some of the other stakeholders and then what you guys are trying to achieve by say end of this calendar year and things like that? I think that is more of a Brian question, yes. Okay. What your timeline is for this? Um, yeah, I think we're hoping to wrap, you know, this part of the 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 initial sort of look at everything within the next couple months, I think. Um, and then what recommendations would come out of that. Um it could be could be moved forward um in time for the next annual town meeting, um, depending on what they are. Um and Judy's right. I think uh, uh, Julie Wagner is a select board member, uh, but typically in the past, the select board has deferred larger zoning amendments to annual town meeting because of the low attendance issue. It's not to say that they've never voted on them uh, because we have, but I think that's their preference. But I can't, I can't speak for them. So I don't believe I've been around when there's been potential for voting on zoning in a special town meeting um but i would probably lean toward waiting until annual as a select board member so if i could if i could just um talk for a second um so yeah i, I think one of the one of the purposes of this meeting was to was to try to get feedback from uh you know the stakeholders so you know postcards were sent out to any of the property owners that that own property within the the study area and we were hoping to get feedback as to you know any plans that 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 folks might have for their property uh, we heard from you know the folks from the Whitley truck stop Whitley diner uh, if anybody else in the in the study area has plans or uh, wishes for the area or things that they don't want to see in the area um, you know we would love to get that feedback tonight to sort of help formulate those recommendations. Um, so if anybody, if anybody else in the audience or online has, has suggestions or comments or anything like that, if they want to share them, that would be really helpful. Brian, there, there is a, a new uh, uh, building going in on Old State Road, north, uh, north of 116, a building permit is issued a while ago for I think that professional building so they are expanding and doing some development there i think that was the dental office right yeah i think it was the dental office and whatever else is with it so there is some investment being made in, in property there i think that's within the study area Are there folks in the audience who are stakeholders and property owners in that area? In the we just, we just got one hand. Yes, just got one hand. Stakeholders. Yes, I live on the um, the side of the pond, and I can tell you, the road is not capable of handling any more traffic than we handle now. It's just a regular little old country road, mm -hmm. and. Sometimes for me to get out of my road, I have to go the opposite direction and turn around and go the direction I want because it's so congested mm -hmm. up there. Okay. So, you know, developing down by the pond would be very difficult mm -hmm. to expand the road, not have water come onto the road because mm -hmm. the pond is a regular, that's, that's the water level. Mm -hmm. And the field was flooded last two weeks, so completely. You're on Old State Road? Yes. Yeah. North of 116. Where is the pond? South of 116. Oh, That's you're south house. of 116. I see. No one I see. Exist, Sorry? No one knows we exist that way. <laughs> I thought you were saying you were to the north. Sorry. Um, okay. I'm north. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And you're saying that 
the section to the south of Old State Road, Just you Old don't State Road is, is all of it. Okay, got it. Is, is that because it's a dead end road, right? Yes. And it's yes. just, it's not really even a two lane road, to be honest. Right. And if it were, that was my house, you getting the beach, it's not really a two lane road. Yeah. And you have the gully with water, and then you have the gully. And what are your feelings on improving that road, access on that road, or widening the road? I don't know you be able to because it's so wet. <laughs> Okay. So I know we built 91, the water came up, and that's yeah. the water table right there. Yeah. The yeah. So. Okay. I don't think the town owns that road because past, past the gate before the barn, because they don't maintain it or do anything. It's on an yeah. easement or whatever. The, so, the town owns from. It doesn't go all the way past the barn. The town owns from. Uh, this right share? here, so where the paving ends, is where the state right. control road okay. ends, and the rest of that road, this is all city control and town controlled, and then this here is state, and all of this is state controlled up here too. Sorry, I know it's really tiny. Well, you guys probably can't see it from back there, but the paving is the the mark. Can I just ask a question on that? Uh, you showed a map and there was like a road that went through the Waitley Diner truck stop. Yes. I can speak that. Yeah. Would you, is it possible to show the um, map again? Because it's actually it's easier to explain with the map on it. So that was. And, and, and that's a real road? That's like a state so, road? So you can see where Old State Road is north of 116. You see where Old State Road goes south of 116. Yeah. And then if you jump was, across I-91, that's where uh, the where continuation Old State Road was before they put I-91 directly on top of it. So that is an odd section of state-controlled road, I imagine. It, it was. So... And it but it's water. actually already, when you mentioned surplus land, it, it, it was part of a the prior property owner to us had already absorbed almost all of it. If I want to point yeah, it, people please. in the audience would see it, but I don't think that's If you want to draw it on a plan. You, you went past it. It was the yellow one. Had it, yeah. That one. Yeah. yeah. So really, right now, the prior property owner had already done the, the state DOT process to procure, basically absorb the portion of the old right of way down to basically a spot behind the diner. So what we're working with the state on right now is to that same process for the remainder down to to the to the line where then you're talking about the field south of us. So it it it, it this is just old mapping, but yeah, we we are contiguous from front to back except for a, a finger that sticks behind the diner, which we already have an application in with the state. But the recent improvements on that were done by you, by the diner, not the state or the town, right? The paving of old state road through there. That's what made us think it was still. Nasty. It wasn't done by yeah. the town or, yeah. or the maybe the state, but within the last two or three years, part of that was behind the diner was paved, and the connection to state road was, was yeah. Paved. Well, if yeah, so, so that is that is still state from from where I lost my orientation now. Okay, down here. So yeah. see where it fans out? That's where you actually pull in in front of the field and right. then the diner to your left. The state still has control up to a point somewhere oh, behind our diner, okay. but that's right. what we have application in with them right now. We can't take what's in front of the field because we don't own yeah. the other side of it. That's our abutter, but we can take to the common line between us. Okay, so they paid for that improvements when they made improvements on State Road and on, on five and ten. On five and ten. Yeah. Five and ten. I'm not sure. I mean with the intersection know. improvements, the state must have paid for that. Sound reasonable. Yeah. I can draw it on your map if you want. 
I also have updated surveys and stuff that I can coordinate with your group. That would be excellent. Yeah, we would love to get any. We don't have any uh, surveys on the area right now. We just have the space map that we put together. So we've already we just to put a, we've already mapped wetlands. Um, oh great! You know what? Like on our property, we don't map on on other properties just because yeah. we wouldn't want someone to do that. Yeah. To us. <laughs> Uh, but so we have, a, you know, we have accurate updated delineations for um, for our property and, and all, you know, Great. Got record boundary and folks. Okay. I have a question. There's nobody here that owns property north of 116, right? Or online? There are. There are two. Right? Two back here? You said north, right? Yeah. Yep. So it, it not the sugar loaf shops, right? Are we talking behind the sugar loaf shops and between the sugar loaf shops and the I think the rural tracks portion. Correct? You you yeah. have a residence yeah. south of your south. Sorry. Never mind. And there's nobody who has any uh, interests in the in the sugar loaf shops, right? I don't I don't see Jared here. Jared was here at the last meeting. Uh, because you know one of the reasons why why we, why we identified this location was that at the time those you know those buildings were very underutilized. Um, at one point there was really nothing happening in the building, so I was just wondering if anybody from that side of the study area was had any insights. But um, we can try to get that in a different way. Have you looked at the the values of property on say north of 116 and, and off of Old State Road there? Because uh, several parcels have changed hands in the, in the last say five to ten years at very minimal values. And if there is a potential to do some kind of development in that area, that may be a, a way of getting more property. Uh, so I don't know if it would be useful to look at, at uh, properties along Old State Road. I mean, you look at the assessors maps, you can go realtors and see what's sold and, and the value of it. But it's very minimal. That may be a, a, a way to get a larger parcel to do something there. Or if it's too expensive, like the gas stations, maybe you're not going to buy out a gas station probably because of the cost. Nobody would be interested in it. Or the diner, nobody's going to buy that out, but, but there are some residential, or used to be residential properties there. There is conditions. There's also some vacant land on the Old State Road there, north of 116. So, Yeah, and this is where I wish Jeff was here, because he knows a little bit more about the technicalities of the zoning. Um, because that was that map that we showed with the existing non-conforming uses, like you're saying. Right. Um, we, I, I can't say right now, I'm not sure how, when you transfer the sale, if you can, how you implement a, a rule that says you must comply with the new commercial zone. Um, residences, just, residences are allowed in the commercial zone. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. So it's, there would need to be, so there would need to be some type of uh, zoning ordinance that that tightens no. up restrictions and oh, like like an overlay district. Could you do that? Or well, something? it depends what you want to do. You could build a shop there now in a commercial zone, if if the owner wanted to do it. They just happen to live in a commercial. Some of it. Okay. Some of it is zoned ag, it ag residential. If if okay. that were changed to commercial, their taxes would go up quite a bit. I don't think that was proposed. I think what was proposed is taking the existing non-conforming parcels. They're not non-conforming. It's allowed use. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, whether they're conforming or not, I guess yeah. maybe it doesn't matter right now. Well, they aren't. I, what I mean to say is that they are not currently commercial uses. Um, yeah. Right. That I can remember. But I, I don't okay. know. Commercial uses are further north of there, I think. And I don't know the dental property that's commercial use. Or not, so.
Is there anything that people don't want to see instead of thinking about what we do want to see? Do we have more ideas on what we don't want? I don't think we need another gas station. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> I'm not a stakeholder as a property owner, but as a citizen of the town, my investment would be in, in seeing things that are uniquely weightly. And what I would not want to see is things that are terribly generic that you could see at any exit off of the highway. Thank you. Great. Do people have areas in this district that they really like to go to or that they frequent? Okay. What, do you, what do you mean by it? I'm just trying to see, you know, you guys are part of the community. What areas of this focus area do you do you use? Do you frequent? Do you like? Um, I, I haven't heard anything about the Tritown Beach. I guess I was curious to hear how people felt about that, if they used it or... Um, some of the other well, it's kind of areas, the sugar lip shops, and the town residents, town and your resident, and some yeah. of the residents, kind of. So, yeah, I don't think it's advertised county wide or region wide, even. I should do that. Yeah, I think the town beach is a hidden treasure, and I would love to see it remain hidden, you know, and just accessible okay. <laughs> to, I mean, you know. I mean, it's got enough usage, but it's on a little dirt road. And then we have so much other space, like all the way down Route 5 and 10, all the way to the Waitley Ballet. I mean, there's that whole section there. I mean, is that going to be redeveloped? I mean, uh, there used to be like a, a big floral shop there, um, also down from that other restaurant that I was that burned down in some kind of lightning strike, I understand. That's polite. <laughs> oh, oh, only Judy got it. <laughs> so if, if you looked at it, I know it's just kind of stretching the study area, but, but if you look along State state Road from, you go from Northampton or Anfield and go north all the way to Greenfield, what kind of businesses are there? What isn't there? What was there and is 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 closed now? And, and there's vacant properties. You know, we're proposing uh, some kind of use there, and this corridor uh, isn't conducive to doing that. We're just spinning our wheels. It's not going to happen. Yeah. But if there's a type of restaurant or a type of meat that's not in that corridor today, maybe that's what we should look at to try to fit in here. Look at the need, the use, and then see where can it fit on what parcel, what land, how you're going to access it. To, to see that, that's what's going to attract people. Uh, you could put, I am just guess, Waitley Diner or McDonald's there, whatever, on, on a parcel. Is, is that what, what's going to attract people in that corridor? And if you look at traffic, if you want people to get off there at that exit, okay, and do something in this corridor, they can get back on 91 and continue north. Same way coming south, you can do the same thing. So it's got to, to me, be more of a of a regional impact of, of or tourism impact on how to get a, an attraction there for people to get off. Mm -hmm. But is Tritown Beach a major attraction? I, I don't know. Is a drive through restaurant, drive through McDonald's or Dunkin' Donuts? I, I don't know. And maybe that's something to, to look at in that corridor. Where are these already in place or have tried or not or, or, or aren't successful? Mm -hmm. If you can propose a Dunkin' Donuts here, yeah, we're saying, well, there was one proposed in Hatfield and one in Deerfield, but they only stayed open for a year because no, no, not enough business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know that's out of beyond your scope of the area. And I would think, you know, any major restaurant, just to say McDonald's, for example, does a study of marketing analysis of are they going to be profitable in an area? And they look at what's all the surrounding businesses, competition. Uh, maybe that's something that 
we should look at here for this study mm -hmm. say what kind of development we can we can have there yeah i think that's a really great point um even driving up like on route five you have like intermittent yeah. raids and cool little shops and places right. to go so i think that i totally see what you're saying is think of the use first and right. then pick the parcel versus right. pick a parcel and try to brainstorm um it's yeah, also Yes, sorry. I'm sorry. It's also not just the people getting off 91, it's the people heading over to Amherst or back. Right. Um, commuting to Greenfield, commuting to Deerfield. It's, that would it's be a, nice. Sorry, Judy. Um, well, uh, I, go. I was just going to say that it would be nice to have um, businesses there that would be useful to people who are commuting through the area and also that people from the community would frequent um, things that are useful to our town, um, but that also would be an attraction for people in the surrounding area. Um, I know from growing up in the area that uh, the Waitley Diner was one of the only places that you know I was familiar with going to uh, specifically in Waitley, um, and it would be nice to sort of build up that area, but also make it uh, unique and relevant to everyone that actually lives here. But then go and go on 116, probably towards Sunderland or even Amherst, see what kind of development is there or not there that we should try to implement here. Um, I am curious because I've heard it a few times now come up something that's uniquely Waitley. Um, as a non Waitley resident, what is uniquely Waitley? I'd love to know. I, from a quick Google, I know that there are a bunch of bricks made here. But that's, that's, you know, and, and the cream, the milk bottle. That's, these are, I, I'm not from here, so I don't know what's uniquely lately. It would be great to know what you guys think. That I is. say we have to make Judy answer that. I think she's the only real Waitleyite. <laughs> no, wait a minute. I've only lived here since 2007. So. Oh, really? Yeah. My family's been here a long time, but not me. I don't think there are many years. If you think uh, about I mean, we used to talk about the site where DeMaio's was as being perfect for a, a farm stand like Atlas Farm because, oh, yeah. because that would draw people and, and cooks and, and that kind of thing. And I and now there are enough well, there's Atlas Farm, but but something like that because farming and food I are important to us. Uniquely um, Waitley is certainly agricultural. Okay. Um, the other thing that's uniquely Waitley is Watermelon Wednesdays. Um, yeah. There oh, might be a way to, the Waitley Inn is uniquely Waitley. Um, there, but. Quan Quan Farm and Nasami Farm. Yeah, actually, there are a lot of plant places. Bay State Perennial and Nasami are both prized by horticulturalists for their special yep. plants. Um, to me, the, the thing that, that stands out most about Waitley, and you hear a lot of people talk about, is the Waitley Inn. It, it's, a, it's a famous restaurant. It's been here for, I don't know, 80, 100 years, whatever, maybe longer. Uh, and it's it's great food that people keep coming back and they talk about it. And you, the U.S. people ask you where you're from, and you say Waitley. Oh, we've been to Waitley End. We know where that is. Uh, that's that's a major attraction uh, in, in town, and and I think yeah, the other thing that, that we see more and more of was Judy moved in some and and uh, about the agriculture. Uh, we've got so many small independent farm stands here. Uh, not so much on well, there is one on on State Road, but you got some on River Road and, and others. Uh, you got strawberry, three four strawberry fields, blueberry fields. You got all the agricultural stuff. Uh, each one kind of acts in independence. So we're kind of a an agricultural community that sells our products locally here. Uh, I don't know how you would. Is there a way to promote that any differently or not? Is there an interest for like a farmers market, I, or I, does I, that exist already in Waitley, mm -hmm. or do you think the local stands are more preferred? Or I, I don't know. 
I'd be interested in the farmer's interested? market. <laughs> no, there, there's no current <laughs> farmer's market that's hosted regularly in the summer here. No. There's, no, there's that's, a, that's a great idea. Who said that, Fred? Yeah, well, there's a major one. Well, well, just one, the large, one of the larger ones that just sold on River Road was, uh, well, it's called Simmers now. It was Precision Next Market. That's the largest one. It's public market. It's readily available, I guess I would say. Uh, I would say Galankas does the biggest business. At what? Yeah, uh, yeah that's on State Road. Okay. Uh, I talked to Janice Galanka about uh, their interest in maybe being part of a larger farmer's market, and she said that she didn't think that they had the people to spare to do more than what they currently do. However, anybody I speak to on the, um, okay, so that's a provider, but anybody I speak to on the consumer side loves the idea of a farmer's market, and Hannah the previous community development person was very interested in seeing if there could be a once monthly or once weekly farmer's market in, say, the parking lot at the diner or something that would pull people off the highway to go. As well as, you know, providing food for local folks. People, Especially. farmers who already have an outlet aren't interested. It's the ones who don't. Right. 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 Maybe a food truck Thursday night farmer's market. Oh, cool. I love it. <laughs> we could even have a, a brewery show up. <laughs> and a band. <laughs> yeah, they have, they have those food trucks. Nope. That's true. So if I could just if I could jump in in conversations that I've had in the past with with some folks and from the previous conversations with the the Franklin County Chamber of Commerce, there was this idea that the exit thirty five area could be a like a I don't really like this term, but a, a gateway area for you know Southern Franklin County or from Waitley, where we could have and we mentioned like a visitor center or something where people can come and they can find out all of these great things about Waitley and about the area, um, <coughs> you know, at one place. And then they could go to the farm stands that, that these farmers have along River Road or, you know, along State Road or wherever, or Tom's Long Dogs or, you know, any other business that I'm sorry I'm missing. Um, you know, there was also that idea of, you know, how do we get this information out about the town? Um so, and I, I, I guess I think currently the the Chamber of Commerce is in old uh, old Deerfield, I think, um, but it doesn't mean we couldn't convince them to come back if you know there was the right situation. But yeah, there there is some literature or information available about, about Waitley in a brochure that I think the Chamber of Commerce put together. But it, it, it's it's very limited and emphasis is not really Whaley, it's the other attractions in Franklin County. The only place I've seen it is at the uh, Dunkin' Donuts uh, truck stop, Dunkin' Donuts restaurant over there and one of their, one of their displays. Other than that, I, I guess it's not read to me readily available. And I don't know how you would get, you're competing with other, other tourist attractions in Franklin County. Uh, what you'd have to do to get more prominence in a, in a brochure, and whether it's it's these businesses pay to be in that brochure, or 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 FERCOG, uh, decides on their own how to do it. I, I don't know how that process happens. I mean, there's ads in a brochure, whether I assume they're they're paid ads, whatever. But can I just ask? Does Waitley have any ability to put uh, ownership of billboards on 91, 116, or any of the major roads? Is in, I mean, not that I like billboards, but I know that they work. Uh, and I, is there a restriction against them? Or I see little ones places. Nope. I don't. I don't know. There are limits to how close you can be to 91. And then you would have to put them on private land 
to be visible. And the same with Route 5. You can't put signs in the town in the States right away. Yeah, because I, I think there's still like, you know, signs that say like, you know, old Hatfield books and stuff like that up on 91. And I was just wondering, you know, uh, if we had that ability, because any type of signage off of North or South 91, you know. I've always assumed that they rented that spot from the owner or paid the owner for the right to put the sign there. Well, so the, the state does put a, puts uh, signs out on like I ninety one. There's there's gas stations, there's restaurants, and I don't know what tourist attraction signs where you see the the the, the shield or the symbol of of the business on there. Uh, so they control what goes on there. Uh, I think some of them are still aren't even are are no longer in business, but uh, I don't know the process, but there is some control in that. And if a business in Whaley wanted to be on a sign, I would think they'd approach the state somewhere. I don't know what office that is to get on this state sign. And it's not a, it's not their own sign. It's just a placard or, or a shield or whatever on a state sign that they control. There are, there are quite a few. I was surprised. I got, I I usually get off in Hatfield on on ninety one, and you don't see the, the signs for Whaley. If you get off there, if you get off at the exit 35, you see the signs for the businesses. So I guess I was surprised to see so many on, on there, more local local uh, businesses on there than, than anything else. Well, other than Dunkin' Donuts and the gas stations, I guess. But um, Something that they've done in Whaley Park is they have a zoning restriction on signage. Um, you can't have, if you're at Dunkin' Donuts, for, for example, you can't have the generic Dunkin' Donuts sign. You have to have a custom-made sign. It has to be different than all your other chains to make it look, um, you, to give it a distinct character. And so in terms of thinking of something that's uniquely lately, um, would, would a, uh, um, like this language with signage be something people are interested in or you know seeing um like like creating a what's the word i'm looking for um like a, a standard sign or something like a an attraction sign or something like that or are people sort of meant to accept and i i guess from from our perspective you know Brand recognition is, is obviously things that you'll hear in, in every public hearing and from every applicant. Um, I think that makes sense on a case by case basis. I haven't been in um, Main Street mm -hmm. uh, in Northampton in a long time, but along Main Street, with a very condensed, you, you know, um, uniform path of the development with storefronts and stuff like that, that's a little different. You think of our parcel, like the Whaley Diner, right? and I talked to Brian about this too. Was we're basically spot zoned already because we've got the uh, the prime wetlands across the street. We've got potentially a wetland, you know, directly south of us, and then we're wrapped by the highway. So, you know, we to to have a sign that might match things that are you know some distance away for some new developments in in more of a collection of properties who would be definitely different. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I'd be less interested in um, putting parameters around the design of signs and more interested in putting parameters around the design of new construction. Mm -hmm. um, are you familiar with the Dunkin' Donuts that's in Haydenville? Yeah. It's across the street from the church. It's at the intersection of Route 9 and High Street in Haydenville. And Haydenville folks lobbied heavily for it not to look like a traditional Dunkin' Donuts. And it's brick, and it looks much more like it fits in with the town. It is, in fact, a Dunkin' Donuts, but it doesn't look like a Dunkin' Donuts that you'd see on King Street in Northampton. And I'd lobby for that kind of thing. Like if we're going to have any chains that they that they fit in with the look and the feel of our small agricultural community. 
Okay. So maybe establishing some type of design standard yeah. that yeah. new commercial development has to adhere to. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Is there anything else? So then, the two, so did anyone else um, have any comments you want to make before we sort of drop to a close tonight? <laughs> Folks online. <laughs> okay, we're getting a bunch of notes. <laughs> I was just going to, sorry, I was going to show you the, you probably won't be able to see it. But it's not brick. It's uh, oh, okay. Yep. clabbered. It doesn't look like a Dunkin' Donuts, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, it, it looks yeah. like, you know, could be any little building in that community. So. Yeah. I think this is a good study, study ever and one that, I think the, the town is trying to be proactive and, and promoting and doing something rather than reactive to something that wants to come in town. And we got to decide if we want it or not. Yeah. I think it's, exactly. it's good that we're looking ahead and ahead, looking in the future. What do we want to see here? And put out some parameters and it didn't see what we get. Yep. Sounds good. Thank you. All right, people are heading out here. Um, should I wrap up? Brian, do you want to wrap up? Who's wrapping up? <laughs> um, I, I'm happy to. Um, okay. I think mostly it's just mostly the study group that's left here, it looks like. Yeah. Um, so I, I think in terms of next steps, we can, we can uh, sort of digest what, what we heard tonight. Um, if there's any, um, properties that you know that we should reach out to individually or on, on a one-to-one -one basis ones there's uh when sylvia and i were sending out the postcards i noticed that there's a common owner of um the red sugarloaf shop building and i believe it's called, what's it called old fox fertilizer parcel adjacent mm -hmm. to the rail line um mm -hmm. i believe that's a common owner at least said the common address uh, in terms of where the property tax bills went. So that's a good indication. Um, so that might be somebody to reach out to to sort of see what's happening. I, 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 um, I do know that the, the, the cannabis retail shop will be opening before the end of August in the, the red building. Um, that's as I understand their plans. So that should generate some amount of traffic into the, you know, into the study area. Um, and there may have also been one common owner with the uh, field to the south of the diner. And I believe there's one other parcel or at least had the same address. Uh, it might have been, uh, there might have been family members. It looked like it was a shared last name, but um, we can reach out to, you know, to those people on an individual basis. Um, but uh, I guess what I thought I heard tonight was, Obviously, the 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 diamond truck stop have you know are moving forward with with their ideas as to what they want to do there. Um, anybody's uh, along Old State Road along Tri Town Beach um, didn't seem to be too interested in any additional development at the end of Old State Road. Um, obviously, the owner of what used to be or still is Urkel Tree Farm uh, wasn't here. Um, so and obviously there's right away and in, in infrastructure challenges that that could be overcome but would be difficult and then to the north of 116 um i guess we didn't have much we didn't get much feedback but we know that there's some uses planned for at least parts of the sugar Loaf shop there's there's two cannabis retailers that have licenses there um i believe the gray one is on the the gray building is still planning on opening up but i also believe that they have extra space within that 
within that building. So, um, yeah. Did you reach out to the to the owners of that part of the building, Brian? Oh, uh, the gray one. Yes. Oh uh, yeah, I know Jared. Yeah, we reached out. He was at the last meeting, actually. He was at the last study group meeting, actually. Okay. Um, but I suspect he'll have of comments and input if we, you know, as we move towards getting some sort of recommendations or things like that. Thank you. So I, I assume we'll be in touch with the with the next meeting date as we sort of try to pull all this together. Does that sound good? Yeah. Yep. Righty. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Glenn. Thank